When someone is sentenced to decades behind bars, you would expect them to serve most of that sentence, right? But 13 investigates found that's not always the case. ABC 13's Micah Hatfield shows us why sentences for convicted felons don't always add up, Micah. Well, you know, just yesterday, Teresa Balboa was sentenced to 52 years behind bars for the murder of five-year-old Samuel Olson. His mother wasn't happy about the plea agreement that her son's killer reached, especially the part that makes her eligible to be released on parole after 26 years, just a fraction of her sentence. Dina Evans is dealing with that right now with her father's killer, but she's on the back end of it. The man convicted was released after less than one third of his sentence. She told me when we sat down together that releasing convicted felons early on parole is a slap in the face to the victim's families. I went over to the table, went right beside him, and I touched his hand, arm kind of area, and I, I said, Daddy, and he didn't say anything to me. So I said it again, and he, he didn't say anything, and so I was kind of... I guess that's kind of when I really learned what death really was. Dina Evans memories of January 8th, 1992 are vivid. She was eight years old. She and her brother went to school that day. Her mother went to work. Her father, lawyer Evans Sr. wore many hats. He was a barber, a school teacher, and had worked as a Harris County Sheriff's deputy. That day, he never made it to work. He spent time at home installing a new answering machine and left what would be his final message captured by our cameras the day after his murder 31 years ago. I'll talk to you later on today, probably. Bye. Wednesday, 9.32 a.m. Hours later, he was ambushed as he entered his home with groceries. My theory is they were in the garage waiting for him to come this way, and then they surprised him. My bedroom was ransacked. Uh, everybody's room was ransacked. Evan's brother, who was just 14 at the time, got home from school to find his father lying dead from a gunshot wound to the head in their living room. About two months after Evan Sr. was brutally murdered at just 50 years old, a break in the case. 15-year-old Jonathan DeAndre Bailey was arrested and charged as an adult in his murder. The Evans family does not believe he acted alone, but he was the only one charged in the deadly home invasion. In 1995, a jury convicted Bailey of murder and a judge sent him to prison for 95 years. It was hope for me because you did this to my dad, you're going to, you're going to jail, and I held on to that. After the trial ended, it was time to heal. But the letters from the Board of Pardons and Paroles started coming three years after Bailey was locked up. You have to reopen up your trauma, your experience, and tell these people, why do I feel that he should stay behind bars? What do you mean? What did we have a trial for? What was the purpose of a jury of 12 jurors? What was the purpose of it? Despite picking up an additional charge in prison, the killer was only locked up for 27 years. He was released on parole in March at 47 years old and is now under mandatory supervision in Northeast Texas. Just because you receive a 95 year sentence, you're probably going to serve a percentage of that. Dr. Kimberly Dodson says several factors determine if someone is released on parole, including the seriousness of their crime and the age when the crime was committed. 13 investigates found the most recent report from the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles shows that in fiscal year 2021, 38% of offenders convicted of violent, aggravated, non-sexual crimes who applied were granted parole. That includes murder. The data shows that the number of inmates in Texas being released on parole has steadily increased over the last 15 years. And the public would be outraged, I think, if they knew how this sentencing scheme really worked. So people want to think there's truth in sentencing. They want to think 95 years is 95 years, but it has, it has never been that way. Texas does not have the truth in sentencing laws like some other states that require an offender to serve all or the majority of their sentence given to them by a judge. TDCJ tells 13 investigates that as of March, their facilities are at 93.7% capacity. If you're sending hundreds of thousands of people to prison, you're going to have to do something on the back end to relieve that overcrowding. The reasoning behind it is insignificant to the family of the victim. It seems like 
the criminal gets all the breaks, the victim, you make it the best way you can. Evans echoes her mother's sentiment 31 years later. She hasn't heard an apology, a why, or what's been done to rehabilitate the man who took her father's life. Rehabilitation really is more of a misnomer, and I think that it's kind of a, a feel-good policy for the public. It's just another defeat in Evans' eyes. All that trauma you went through, oh, that didn't matter. We're going to let him out on parole. You know, that's exactly what, basically, that's what we feel like. That was our Micah Hatfield reporting. According to data from TDCJ, in fiscal year 2022, there were more than 116,000 inmates in state prisons. Of those, more than 60,000 were eligible for parole.